Hello Firearm Safety students and here is a new video. I finally have some time to make you a video. So this one will cover how to fill out the PAL application. So I'm going to switch the screen and we're going to just scroll through the application uh, that you're going to send to the RCMP in order to apply for a PAL license. So the first step in filling out the application for the PAL license is completing your Canadian Fire and Safety course or your Canadian Restricted Fire and Safety course. Once you get that course report back in the mail, then you should print out the application. You can find it at the Canadian Firearms Program website that's run by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Just Google it, Canadian Firearms Program PAL application. Then scroll down and you'll see form number RCMP 5592, application for possession acquisition license under the Firearms Act for individuals aged 18 and over. That's for most people, adults who are applying for the PAL. If you're a minor under 18, over 12 years old, then you have to contact your local provincial CFO in order to apply for a minor's license. If you took the course with me, my assistant Kimberly will send you an email, a follow-up email after the course. It will have a link to download this form directly and it will also have a link to my Google reviews. If you haven't already, please give me a review. I would very much appreciate it. You can give me five stars if you like. You can leave a comment. That'd be awesome. If you want to give me one star, that's good too. But uh, I don't know what's going to happen with your paperwork. Just kidding. I submit all the paperwork. Once you download the um, application to your device or phone or computer, you're going to print it up one-sided, color or black and white, that doesn't matter, letter size paper, print out all the pages in the application. Even the first few ones, you may not think they're important, but I suggest you print them all out. After that, you're going to read. Read the first few pages. One, two, three, and four are all the instructions in how to fill out the form. I find it it's really, I highly recommend you read all the instructions because it's going to answer most of your questions about uh, filling out this application form. So once you print it out, you're going to take note of this address. That is the address you're going to send the application to once you've completed it. I highly recommend you send this application through tracking mail, tracking or registered mail. You don't need a signature, just get it tracked to make sure it arrives at this uh, address. In the instructions, we have paragraph J fees. Uh, the fee is 8323 if you're applying for restricted. If you're applying for non restricted and restricted, you pay the 8323 cents. Okay? It, if you're applying for restricted and you don't have non restricted, it's implied that you have, you're trying to get both licenses. So if you're a noob, you don't have any PAL license whatsoever, then you're paying 83 23 for both the non-restricted and the restricted license. Take note of the checklist on the bottom of page 3. Make sure you follow this checklist and make sure all these things are checked off before you seal the envelope and mail it off. If anything in this application is missing or incomplete or incorrect or just not doesn't seem right, they're going to send it back to you and it's going to delay your application. Remember, all these tips are not going to guarantee that you're actually going to get a PAL license. You're going to have to pass the federal background check and be vetted by the RCMP. These are just tips on how to conduct the administration and how to fill out the forms. It doesn't guarantee you're actually going to get a PAL. It's all, everyone gets a PAL based on a case-by-case -case basis based on their own background and history. So label instructions, you're going to cut out this label on the piece of paper that you printed. You're going to print your name, name of applicant, that's your name, your full name, first and last name, then the name of your guarantor, 
and your guarantor is going to sign off on that. Your guarantor can be anyone you've known for one year or more that's over 18 years old or older. And that it can be your current conjugal partner, your husband or wife or spouse or partner. Um, after you fill that out, you're going to glue it onto the back of the PAL photo. Next, we're getting into page five. Paragraph A. All these dots, you're going to darken the dots. Make a big dark circle. Use blue or black ballpoint pen. Don't use a gel pen because it smudges. But use a ballpoint pen. That's what I suggest. Blue or black color. Fill out all the form fields. Read carefully. Do this carefully. Fill out all the uh, everything that applies to you. If it doesn't apply to you, say no or leave it blank. Personal information, fill that out. I highly suggest you fill out everything correctly and neatly in big block letters, all capital letters. Print as carefully as you can so it's legible and nice and big so people can read it easily. Okay, fill out your contact info, proof of identity, third line 13 a, alpha, type of identification, that's like your driver's license, issuing government, that's 13B, that's Ontario, if you live in Ontario, whatever province, and 13C, Charlie, uh, the li driver's license number. Your home address, so that's where you actually live and where you plan to store the guns. Mailing address, that's where you get your mail, obviously. Paragraph C, Charlie, personal history. Answer all the questions regarding your personal history. Answer truthfully and correctly to the best of your knowledge. If you don't know for sure, try to find out more information so you can answer it correctly. Don't lie on the federal firearms application that you're sending to the federal police. That's called fraud or perjury. I'm not a lawyer or a cop, but I'm pretty sure you shouldn't lie on a firearms application. Paragraph D, conjugal status. Answer all those questions. And paragraph E, echo. Information about your current conjugal partner. Yes, your current spouse, common law, husband or wife or other partner has to sign off on this application. You can fill out all their details and they have to sign it off. They have to authorize and be cool with you having guns and acquiring firearms and ammunition. Paragraph F, Foxtrot. Your former conjugal partner within the last two years also has to sign off on your PAL application. So if you, hopefully that breakup went smoothly. Uh, good luck with that one. But if you don't know where they are, you can uh, click... I declare to do not know their current address or phone number, okay? But if the you click that, they, the RCMP, the Chief Firearms Officer still has a duty to notify them of your application. If you're still in contact with them, fill out all their particulars and get them to sign off on it as well. Obviously, this is to prevent uh, any uh, domestic violence issues or incidents in the future. Paragraph G, safety training certification so yeah you complete the course so line 20a yes that's for the non-restricted course ontario or whatever province you completed in and the year you completed it and the proof attached click that check that off and canadian restricted firearm safety course if you did the restricted and you're applying for both at the same time line 20b yep yes and on Ontario, whichever province you were in, uh, where you completed the course, that's where you completed the course, the year, proof attached. After you finish the course, you're waiting for about six to eight weeks. If you're in Ontario, you're waiting for that course report to come in the mail. If you took my course, you filled out a self-addressed envelope with the FSESO, Firearm Safety Education Service of Ontario, return address in the top left hand corner that envelope that's what you're waiting for that will contain your mandatory course report that will contain the course reports required that in order to apply for the pal 
there will be two copies of each course report from each course that you completed. There'll be two duplicate copies, they're exactly the same, from the Canadian Farm Safety course. There'll be two carbon copies of your course report from the Canadian Restricted Farm Safety course. What you do is separate the two copies, keep one copy for your own records in case this application gets lost or stolen, and send one copy of each one from the Canadian Fire and Safety course and one from the Canadian Restricted Fire and Safety course and include it inside the envelope with this PAL application. Line 20C, 20 Charlie. Have you been certified by the Chief Arms Officer as meeting the safety training requirements or have successfully completed a course approved by the Attorney General of Manitoba or Quebec before 1995? Chances are no, okay? So that means, were you in Quebec or Manitoba before 1995? Well, some of you probably weren't even alive, so probably no. That's probably no for most people, 99% of people, unless you're older. Paragraph H, references. This is where you got to find at least two people that you've known for three years or more and is at least 18 years old. But these references cannot be your current wife or husband or partner that you live with. They don't call everyone's references. It's kind of random who they pick. But if they can't get a hold of this reference and they can't talk to this person, that may delay your application. It's very important to pick someone who will be a good reference. First of all, get their permission. Ask them and make sure they are willing to speak to the federal police on their behalf. Here are my tips to make sure you get a good reference. First of all, get someone who is reliable. Get someone who is crime free. Get someone who has a PAL license. A PAL holder is probably one of the best references because you know they're a crime free person probably, most likely, and they, you know they're gonna support your goal of getting a gun license. Second, get someone who's reliable. Somebody has a telephone number, someone who answers their telephone, someone who's not too busy to do this, someone who has a voicemail, someone who has a voicemail that's set up and they check it regularly on a regular basis. These are some tips. You can pick anyone you want in the world, but I highly recommend you pick someone who lives in the same province as you, in the same country, and speaks English or French fluently and is awake during business hours. That person's just gonna be easier to communicate with and they're gonna be easier to get in touch with. Also understand if the RCMP does call your references, they will ask them questions regarding your previous history and behavior. And they're gonna be talking to a federal police officer who is trained in asking questions. And it may be kind of a nerve wracking process or conversation. So make sure you can get someone who can handle this kind of interaction. Someone who can handle the stress of speaking in a formal interview with the federal police officer. Paragraph I, photo guarantor. So your photo guarantor also has to sign off on this portion of the application. So fill in their particulars there and get them to sign that and date it. Paragraph J, fees. You're going to uh, pay the 8323 and darken the box. You can submit your payment through any of these major credit cards. But if your credit card is expiring within, I'd say, six months, then use a different method of payment. Certified check or money order is probably more reliable because if your credit card gets uh, canceled due to loss, theft, or fraud, then they... That may, may delay your application and it'll take time to uh, give them a new credit card number. Okay, make sure the card holder, whoever's paying for application, uh, signs off on that, dates it. And paragraph K, applicant declaration. If everything is true and correct, to the best of your knowledge, sign it off and date it. But once you sign it off, check over your application check it once check it twice check it a third time get someone else to check it for you you might have missed a, a block or a checkbox or something like that check it against the checklist and seal up the envelope and send it via tracking mail 
What do you do after that? You wait. If you want to check the status of your application, you can always do that at the RCMP Canadian Finance Program website. There is a way to check it online. Uh, chances are if they charge your credit card, you may see that on your bank statement, your credit card statement, then maybe your application is being processed and the uh, PAL is eminent. So just keep on checking the mailbox. Processing times originally used to be about two to three months. That was before COVID. Now, uh, during the pandemic, things were delayed. It took some people up to six months. Now that we're kind of back to normal, uh, processing times are still pretty extended. Depends on your province. Um, I mean, it de just depends. Right now, app there are a lot of applications going through. Every single fire instructor in Canada, I'm sure. Uh, I'm not. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure they are fully booked for months and have been for the past two years. There are a lot of people applying for the license now for several reasons, as I may have discussed before in my previous videos. There are a lot of people applying. So is the government going to adapt to this increased uh, number of applications? Are they gonna hire more people and increase their customer service or expedite the applications? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, how do most government, government offices work? You do the math. You're an adult, you can figure it out. Anyway, so all you do is wait it's all case by case. Some people whose backgrounds are really clean and they've been in Canada a long time, those backgrounds are easier to check and those go through quicker, I presume. I don't know everything, okay? And people who don't have extensive history in Canada and have some things that happen in their personal history, this requires uh, talking to other agencies, possibly in other countries. It means... Uh, they have to investigate further and this takes more time. As a result, your application will take longer. But be patient. If you ever wanna inquire, you can call the CFO and uh, talk to them politely and tactfully and courteously and hopefully you get a good answer. So that's it for today. Hopefully you get a pal. If not, then you don't get to shoot guns. But hopefully you get one and once you get one, you can immediately start buying whatever firearms are legal in Canada and buy as much ammunition and firearms that you can afford. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and share this video with somebody else you took the course with so they have all the tips and filling out the forms. All right, everyone, stay safe.